Hey guys, it's Melvin7 here. Today I'm bringing you episode 4 of Transfer Rumors slash Roundup. So let's kick things off. Now this one is going to be kind of another report. It's about Zlatan. Uh, I mentioned him in episode 1. Obviously he's heavily linked with a move to Manchester United. Sky Sports say that a one-year deal will be agreed in the near future. But the Telegraph have said that the reason this is delaying, Zlatan originally wanted his uh, future done before the start of the Euros. But now he's very confident that all that needs to happen is he just needs to sign the contract and it's done with Manchester United. So with that in mind, his PSG contract ends on June the 31st, I think, or June 30th. Anyway, sometime late in June. And uh, the belief is, from the Telegraph anyway, that he's going to wait until that expires so he can get a large uh, loyalty bonus and soak in his agent and then... He'll sign for Manchester United shortly after that in the early stages of July. It makes sense. It is kind of, it's, oh, it's so annoying being a fan, wanting this deal to be done. But if, if it's like so many reports are saying it's so close. So I do generally believe it is. And this makes total sense. So if you've got to wait, then I'll wait. If we're going to get Zlatan regardless, it doesn't matter whether it's now or July as long as we get him basically so that's the latest reports and I kind of believe that it makes sense the next one I've got is very unlikely I would say but it's one that I oh this would just be a dream signing it's Paul Pogba linked with Manchester United he was linked with Manchester City but according to the Telegraph again they've dropped out um, for whatever reason maybe they've got other targets in mind and obviously they're just saying Gundogan but Jose Mourinho's priority in midfield is apparently Paul Pogba. Now, there's been no formal bid, but um, it's believed Juventus would accept a bid in the region of 70 million. Now, no matter what the fee is, we should pay it. Like, this is a signing that would just be terrific. It really would. It's the exact player we need, and obviously, we did have him before he joined Juventus for free, and there's loads of reports. And uh, his agent is the same one as Latan Ibrahimovic. Now, if Ferguson had still been in charge now, we probably wouldn't be getting this done because he, he just couldn't get on with uh, the agent. I think it's R Raiola, uh, Ranaora, I don't know how the hell you pronounce it. But anyway, he's Zlatan Ibrahimovic's and Paul Pogba's agent. But we'll see what happens with this one. This is a signing that I just want so badly. I don't think it will happen. But if there's a slimmest chance we could lure him back to Manchester United then we have to take it and we have to bid whatever it takes. Money shouldn't be an issue. Next player we've got linked is Janssen to Spurs. Uh, he's a striker who was very prolific in the Eredivisie, I believe. Uh, 27 goals, I think. So they definitely need striker backup. They've got Harry Kane. Obviously, they've got Clinton NG, who's uh, quite young, but does isn't really seen as you know a star striker and... They definitely need backup because Kane, if he does get injured, as good as he is, they, they just need someone else. And obviously they were linked to Berahino a while ago, but that doesn't seem as though it's going to go through. So this one, I think the report fees about £12 million, and uh, it would be a sensible buy for Spurs. It would be a typical Spurs signing. I think he's 21-22, quite young. So yeah, that would be a good signing for them. The next one, we've got another pretty much unlikely never gonna happen signing rumor and that is a uh, Antoine Griezmann to Manchester United he just signed a five-year deal with Atletico Madrid I wonder what his new release clause is because Spanish clubs always put release clauses in their contract so it'd be interesting to find out what that is but I just can't see this one happening of course I would love it to happen and if it did I'm pretty sure he'd play as a right wing in the system that we've got but I just can't see it happening and now he signed a new deal with Atletico Madrid I expect him to stay there another year until Simeone leaves then we'll see what happens but uh, yeah for now I just can't see it happening now we've got a trio of players that are linked to Manchester City we'll start off with the big one and that is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang Sky Sports see talks are in advanced stages but then other outlets um, come out and say that Manchester City are baffled by these um, stories and that there was interest but they, they since then they haven't put any offers and it, it's kind of when cold the trailer and apparently Borussia Dortmund wants something like 70, 80 million and I know Manchester City probably won't care what they pay but there's conflicting reports. I mean Sky Sports are generally reliable, sometimes they do get it wrong but I'm, I'm honestly... 
it's the same thing I don't want to happen because it's Manchester City, but it's a one that, of course, it could happen. And if it does, then, you know, that's going to spark real trouble for uh, other other players, um, sorry, other teams in the Premier League. This is one that I just do not want to see City get. I mean, Aguero and Aubameyang up front with Gundogan behind. Uh, that That's... And De Bruyne, I forgot about De Bruyne. That is scary, like, seriously, wow. If that happened, then I'd, I'd really... Um, I'd, I'd really be worried for Man City, but we'll see what happens. As I say, Sky Sports out the blue said it, it was in advanced stage, which means you know it's close to completion if it's in advanced. So we'll see what happens over the over, over the next few days. Another player they're linked with is uh, Laporte, who I did cover in another episode, I think. But uh, Sky Sports again saying that Manchester City are interested. It's known that he's got a 39 million release clause. He is currently injured. But as we saw with Gundogan, who was also injured, it shouldn't really prove to be too much of an obstacle. And Manchester City could easily still sign him. He doesn't have any Euro commitments, so I expect that to go through soon. Like That is a signing I can see City doing. Whether they'll sell some defenders, I can imagine Dimicheles. I think his contract runs out in June, so they'll probably just let him uh, leave the club. Then they've obviously got company who's injured for about two months, I think, into the season. Uh, then there's Mangala, there's Otamendi, Laporte, and they're also, according to Sky Sports, going after John Stones, which I did say to my mate um, when they were linked to Laporte first, uh, they were also linked to Stones, and he said he just can't reckon City would sign those two when they've already got company, uh, Mangala and Otamendi, but I went, yeah, they, I can just see it happening. Like Generally, I think City will sign both Stones and Laporte, and Sky Sports are saying there's interest in both. With Stones, obviously, it's a risk. It is a risk with any player you buy. Um, he, he's in an evident team that doesn't really have any defensive cohesion in since David Moyes left, and uh, he does make a lot of mistakes, particularly this season, but in a better team... With a better tactician like Pep Guardiola, I'm pretty sure he would fulfil his potential that a lot of people expect Stones to have in the future. So, again, it would just be frightening if City signed these three. And they're, they're likely. That's what's, that's what's uh, scary. They generally are likely to all go to Manchester City, especially with Pep Guardiola there. So, I'm not admitting defeat already. Like, we, if we get Zlatan, if, we're, we, if somehow we manage to get someone like Pogba, then... You know, we. I believe we can contend. We've got Jose Mourinho. If it was Louis Van Hal in charge, then I would be extremely worried. But as for City, things are looking bright, unfortunately, and that's from a direct rival saying that. Uh, the next player I've got here is Mkhitaryan, who is linked to Arsenal. He's only got one year on his contract left. He's had a stunning season for Borussia Dortmund and he's linked with a 25 million move. They wouldn't really be able to get too much more than this considering he's only got one year. And this would be a player that I think would fit Arsenal's side perfectly. Uh, side perfectly. Play him on the right in for uh, Walcott who plays there a lot of the time now. Joel Campbell probably should play there a bit more given his performances last season. Maybe a Wobie as well. But... I think Mkhitaryan would take that spot and he would fit. He's a brilliant passer of the ball. He's technically gifted and he's a fantastic attacker. And he just seems like an Arsenal player. I think that would be a perfect player for them. I said Jamie Vardy, I don't think will. But as I say, Henrik Mkhitaryan, I think, would be quality for Arsenal. And it looks as though it could happen. Wenger's finally spending. Other seasons, I would have said no chance because Wenger never spent. But now he is. I, it would be a fantastic signing for Arsenal. It would be interesting to see what happens with it. Chelsea are also linked, but I think because of the Champions League pull and because of Arsenal's style of play, I think Mkhitaryan would go there instead. Also, Chelsea have Hazard, Willian, depending if any of them leave, but they're first choice and I don't think either of them would be dropped. So anyway, next we've got Mane, who's linked to Liverpool. He was originally linked to Manchester United when Louis van Gaal was the manager, but now, of course, he is not and Mourinho isn't apparently keen on him. So Liverpool are reportedly set to bid 30 million, which is believable. They bid 32.5 for Benteke. Uh, I'm not comparing him to Benteke. I'm just saying they do spend that kind of money for Premier League players. And I think he would be a quality buy for Liverpool. I think he would be exactly what they need, a fast-pacey winger. 
uh, maybe someone who could replace what Raheem Sterling was when he was at Liverpool. So this is a solid signing that I think would improve Liverpool and it's one I can see happening, particularly now Ronald Koeman's left Southampton. It could be a free fall for them, depending if they get De Boer as the manager, but we'll see what happens. I generally do think this one will go through though. Depends what Jürgen Klopp wants, of course, but uh, we'll see. And the last player I've got linked here is Wanyama to Spurs. Now, on the betting... It's, it's went really, really narrow for Wanyama to Spurs. I think it's something like uh, 1 to 4, which basically means if you put £10 on, you'll get £12.50 back. And he's, um, he's, he's, his odds for staying are quite um, sorry high. Like If you put £10 on, you'll get 25 back. So the likelihood is, according to the betting anyway, that Wanyama will maybe go to Spurs. And considering, again... He wanted to leave last season, I think, for Arsenal, and Ronald Koeman said no. But now he's not there. I reckon Southampton could be facing a mass exodus, so this is highly likely, and I think he'd be fantastic for Spurs. He's another defensive midfielder. They've got Eric Dyer. Apart from that, well, they've got Moussa Dembele as well, who's a good player, but it would just give them more strength in depth. That's something Spurs lack. They have a stunning first team set up, but this season they really need to focus on getting rotational players and squad depth. And the two they've been linked with, Janssen and Wanyama, would fix two areas in their squad which they need some more strengthening in. So a lot of these transfers I can see happening, but let me know what you think. If there's any that I've missed... Oh, there's one more that I nearly missed again. Nearly missed again, and I was supposed to do that yesterday. And it's Nemanja Matic linked to Manchester United. Now, this is one that, well, Mourinho signed him twice, didn't he? I think for Chelsea. He definitely signed him once anyway. And uh, he, he, a lot of people are treating as though he's Mikel. Now, he is a very, very good CDM on his day. When I say on his day, he is. He just had a poor season last season when Chelsea were underperforming. But his first season, he was terrific. And he's just a Mourinho buy again. He's six foot four, strong, and he's just a perfect CDM. And this would be a fantastic signing. I just don't see it happening, though, given we're direct rivals with Chelsea. They'd probably want something stupid like 40, 50 million, considering they paid something like 24, I think. So they probably want double what they paid at least because he's going to a rival team. So, I mean, if it's an if it's a choice between Pogba or Matic, I would prefer Pogba, but both of them are unlikely. So we'll, we'll see, but Matic would be a signing that I would love. Of course I would, but it's Chelsea, so I can't see it happening. If it does, fantastic, but I just can't see it happening. But you can tell Mourinho is trying to fix the spine of the team. If Zlatan comes in, tall striker... Uh, we've got Eric Bailey, tall defender, Matic, if he did join, which I think is unlikely, but six foot four, he's a target, Pogba's over six foot as well, so he's going after a tall spine, and that is good because we are terrible at set pieces, defending and attacking them, and we just don't have enough height in the team, and that is something that Mourinho teams are known for, so yeah, it's not surprising that he's linked with all these tall players. Obviously, there's other attributes that are important, but especially when it comes to set pieces, Jose Mourinho is a master at uh, managing to get a team that can attack and defend them. But anyway, enough on our tactics and stuff. Hopefully, you have enjoyed. Let me know if there's any players I've missed, and I'll do them in tomorrow's episode. Hopefully, you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video, and yeah, peace.